Who are those nations that is helping Hamas terrorists? Do you think uh, it is only the Islamic nations? No Islamic country will ever take any single Palestinian. Not only they gave Gaza, they provided water supply to Gaza, provided electricity to Gaza. Palestinians in Gaza were living off Israel's help. But most important is their citizens and the soldiers. Israel has very limited uh, population. Fortunately, all 18 lakhs are the nationals. Then comes the artillery fire. Then comes the tanks. Then the most complicated phase of war is house-to-house -house search and room-to-room -room search. You know, what is the cost of war uh, for Israel? Every day it is spending 150 million dollars. Now that they will occupy Gaza, I mean, uh, retain Gaza to be uh, precise, not occupy, because it was their land given to Hamas. I hope that, you know, the government doesn't do the same mistake of giving back Gaza to Hamas terrorists. Namaste all. With me, I have uh, Wing Commander Sudarshan. He is also an author. So let us talk to him uh, about the ongoing Israel and Hamas conflict and uh, let us find out from him the actual reasons behind it and uh, let us also find out who else is involved in this. I mean, we already know that uh, Iran and you know few other Islamic nations are behind it, but then let us also find out if there is anything else cooking. Uh, so, uh, Sudarshan sir, thank you so much for your time and welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, like I said, so uh, what is cooking? I mean, who, who are those nations that is helping Hamas terrorists? Do you think uh, it is only the Islamic nations? No, uh, there are many faces to uh, this particular uh, attack on Israel. See, what happened on October 7th? The uh, attack on Israel was unprovoked. Israel didn't initiate it. But of course, they will end it. Logically, they will end it. Why it happened? Uh, the one aspect is, on September 20th, during the G20 summit in uh, India, New Delhi, uh, many countries, including the uh, crown pins of uh, Saudi Arabia and uh, European Union and uh, Joe Biden, who represented the uh, American uh, part, they signed a very, very important uh, agreement. Uh, all these countries whom I mentioned, they signed a very, very, very important uh, economic agreement called IMEC. IMEC okay. India, Middle East, Europe, Economic Corridor. This is in G20? Uh, yeah, in, it, it happened in G20. G20 India? In New Delhi. Right. Okay. What is the significance of this IMEC is, uh -huh. it connects India to Middle East by sea, okay. sea route, okay. and Middle East to Haifa in uh, Israel okay. by road, right. and from Haifa further it goes to Greece and Europe. Right. Okay. What is the significance and why China is not happy with this is because this is counter to Chinese Belt and Road Initiative called BRI, right. which passes through Indian claim of Gilgit Baltistan. Okay. Nearly 500 kilometers of it. As you know, Gil Gilgit Partisan is a terrain under dispute. Right. Okay. So we claim it is part of India. China is going ahead. Of course, presently it is uh, almost you know, stopped. Okay. Uh, the building, uh, the road. So Ch Chinese building roads is stopped. This is stopped. Is uh, as of now, yeah. they have a very uh, uh, you know uh, bad uh, situation going on within China. Right. And yeah. Uh, as of now, this activity is not there. Okay. And um, why China gets involved in this is because it is bypassing all that uh, countries, in, including Iran, Afghanistan, and uh, Turkey. So this um, particular corridor is beneficial to India because if you um, follow the stock uh, market. Uh -huh. The moment this was signed, uh -huh. the railway stocks have jumped up by 10%. Oh. There was a circuit breaker. IRTC, IRCTC. And yeah, IRC. all those because yeah. the railway infrastructure will come and lead to Mumbai. Right. From Mumbai, this IMEC will start. Okay. Okay. So, when they discovered uh, unprovoked rocket attack, see, uh, these uh, rockets are not such a sophisticated uh, weapon system. It has got a steel pipe filled with sugar, potassium nitrate. Potassium nitrate basically is a chemical fertilizer. Okay, that we use regularly. Regularly. So, um, 
when these things were imported into Hamas, uh, nobody suspected. You know, that they thought maybe it is used for. Uh, there were a lot of greenhouses in Gaza, okay. who, which used to one time produce uh, exotic uh, vegetables and flowers, okay. which were actually uh, exported. And because of that, in Gaza there is an airport built oh. when Israelis were there. Oh. It is pre. 2005, there is a kibbutz called uh, Kush Gatif. Kush Gatif. Kush Gatif, where the Israelis were encouraged when uh, Israel occupied Gaza in uh, Six Days War in 1967. It was under Israel's control. Okay. Okay. And that is the time they encouraged the Israelis to go there okay. and establish their kibbutz. Kibbutz basically means uh, the ag agrarian society. Right. What the we, community. So community living. Okay. Then uh, what ha further happened was um, the Israelis employed all these Palestinians in their form okay. and they were producing uh, some of the most exotic uh, flowers and uh, vegetables. vegetables. Okay. And also a very big second largest dairy farming happening in Gaza. Okay. So do we still have it? I mean... No. no. That is what the tragedy. Okay. We should have continued. I mean, the Israel should have continued. Uh -huh. In 2005, the uh -huh. then Prime Minister of Israel, Ariel Sharon, okay. he, uh, now he did not know with whom to negotiate okay. about uh, improvement of Gaza or improvement uh -huh. of West Bank. Uh -huh. They gave it. The Fatah unit of the Palestinian was controlling, even today, controlling the West Bank. West Bank, basically, it is on the West Bank of the Jordan River. Okay. The Jordan River separates the Jordan and Israel. Israel okay. okay. And Gaza was taken over by Hamas. Okay. And 18 years back, there was an election in which Gaza uh, was uh, controlled by Hamas. And there was an infight between Fateh and Hamas. And uh, Fateh vacated Gaza and went to West Bank. Okay. Okay. In 2005, Ariel Sharon, what he said, let us give, under the pressure from United States, George Bush was the president then. Okay. So, uh, they were told, let us vacate. From Gaza? From Gaza, completely. Okay. There were uh, 1,700 families. Okay, so they had to vacate people. Gaza and come back to Israel. Uh -huh. They were forcibly vacated. And uh, the day they vacated, next day, Hamas destroyed their entire kibbutz. Oh. So, uh, from there onwards, the uh, fence was built and uh, Gaza totally got isolated. Okay? The surface of the uh, Gaza is, of course, uh, the Palestinians live there, but where Hamas lives is underground. They have a network of 500 kilometers. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Gaza length is 45 kilometers by 10 kilometers. Okay. Within that underground, they have built a network of 500 kilometers. That is where they live, that is where they store their rockets, that is where all the illegal activity is going on. And this network opens up in Egypt. This network opens up in the beach. This network goes up right up to Lebanon border. So that's how they have been able to, without uh, without uh, uh, you know giving a hint to either Shin Bet or Mossad, uh -huh. they have been able to do it. Uh, that's how the Israel was taken by surprise on 7th October right. when the attack happened. So, so during this attack, uh -huh. when they recovered this, uh, basically it's an iron tube. I told iron you, tube, yeah. the iron tubes are made in China. Okay. Okay. So it is not that they indigenously manufactured everything. So the, this is where the China angle comes into it. Okay, so here's the black ship. Apart from the Islamic nation, it is China that China. Right. Okay. Why China is unhappy? Because now we are countering China's Belt and Road Initiative right. by IMEC. So no, how, this is one angle. How, is, how, is, how will China benefit if Hamas attack Israel? I mean, if they are providing rockets to Hamas. There are two angles to it. Okay. One, China wants to shift the attention from South China Sea, okay. where um, huge American presence is there uh -huh. and where they are waiting for the right time to attack Taiwan okay. and capture it. So the, if the now attention, world attention is shifted to Middle East okay. and to Mediterranean Sea, 
yeah. that is where the action will happen. I have a free hand here. Or... Yes, and uh, it will be now. The world's attention is more focused on Mediterranean uh, front, where is already three warships of America been deployed. are deployed there, and America is sending their aeroplanes. Apart from 600 aeroplanes of uh, Israel, uh, uh, they are additionally putting. And even UK uh, is sending few. I heard. Yes. Yes. You should uh, be very. Uh, clear why this type of aeroplanes have come. Okay. There is a bomber called B-52 bomber. Okay. okay, It has got tons and tons of warhead okay. which will pierce through the tunnel system okay. by 100. Or it can pierce through a right up to 100 feet. 100 feet. Okay. So, it is said that it is 40 meters down that day. Exactly. So some, some even said 70 meters also. Okay. But the armament which B-52 bomber is carrying yeah, it can pierce through 100 meters. Now, the war will go on. See, it is not a conventional war. It is the uh, retaliation effort for a terrorist attack. Right. Correct. It is, Israel is a very good at conventional war. Right. Okay. Within six days of war in 1967, they regained the territory three times the bigger than Israel, right. including the Egyptian Sinai Desert. The uh, softening of this Gaza uh -huh. will be is happening now. Currently, okay. it is the work in progress because uh, now they got a uh, little bit of uh, accurate information, right. and that is the exact location of these tunnels they got, and they already commenced destroying them. Right. Okay. Now, I, I hope the political decisions won't uh, make things go heavier again, because. Like you said, uh, Gaza was given back to them uh, yes. once, once they are occupied. Do you think any of that mistake will happen ever again? Because now that they will occupy Gaza, I mean, uh, retain Gaza to be uh, precise, not occupy. Because it was their land given to them, uh, given to Hamas. Now, now they will take it back. So I hope uh, no giving back as such will happen. No. Uh, in fact, uh, not only they gave Gaza, they provided water supply to Gaza. They provided electricity to Gaza. Yeah. The Palestinians in Gaza were living off Israel's help. Right. Without that, now they stopped it. Right. Now, now they, are, they are crying humanity and oh, things no, like no, that. No, 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 victim card. Now that you are from Bangalore, sir, I have to tell you, we had to, uh, I had got a chance to interview a few of the protesters uh, who stood uh, in support with Palestinians. All they said is, we are here for humanity. I asked them, what, ha what happens to your humanity when babies were butchered in Israel? They had no answers. Uh, so, like that, I, I hope that, you know, the government doesn't do the same mistake of giving back Gaza to Hamas terrorists. No, no. Uh, what uh, my individual, uh, you know, opinion is, the Gaza will be destroyed in any case. Because uh, the moment you uh, dislodge this network system, uh, or tunnel, they just called terror, terror tunnels. They are called terror tunnels. Right. And naturally, the superstructure built above that uh -huh. will collapse. Right, but but what happens to the nation who strongly stood with Hamas? I mean, they are directly in support to this terrorist. They are the one who elected Hamas. It is an elected body, Hamas. Of, of course, 18 years back, there was no uh, election. Well, they might destroy Hamas right now, but don't you think that they might come back in another form? Because you have you see so many uh, nations who are so rich backing them up. See, uh, any war, it has a certain aim. Okay. okay. One is maybe there is a disputed territory. Okay. Not that they need that territory. You know, the dimension what you mentioned, 45 kilometers by 10 kilometers, it's not a big deal for Israel because as it is, they are prosperous outside uh, Gaza and West Bank. That is not the... What is the aim of okay. Israel's attack is to buy peace for the next 50 years. Okay. Okay, or 30 years, maybe. It is just buying peace, so that at least next 30 years they can live peacefully. That is one of the aim of the war, anyway, not only Israel. Because this, this cyclic, you cannot stop. As long as that cult is there, uh, it will continue. Rakta bijasur bolte, that's how it is. Uh, so, at least they can live peacefully for next 30 years too. 50 years. Like they say, reason behind every war is peace. Peace. So, Buying peace. You have to buy peace. At very, you know, what is the cost of uh, war uh, for Israel? Every day it is spending 150 million dollars. Every day. It is, war is 
not yet started. Uh, it is only softening of the target which is happening. Right. Then comes the artillery fire. Then comes the tanks. Then the most complicated phase of war is house to house search and room to room search. Okay, so you think that that will also happen? That will have a heavy attrition both sides. That is when a lot of attrition, a lot of soldiers will have to sacrifice their life. So is it about to come? It will it will start maybe uh, in another 15 days. Oh. Okay. So it is not that uh, the previous wars what Israel did in six days, you know, seven days, 13 days. That was the maximum uh, period Israel ended the war. But now it will prolong for at least two to three months. Because they have to annihilate the Hamas network completely. And it will have collateral damage. Right, both sides? Both sides. Bo see, Gaza will lose its citizens and then the peace that it had. Of course, Israel will lose a lot of money and their citizens that they have lost. Yes. Already. Most important is their citizens and the soldiers. Right. You see, Israel uh, has very limited uh, population. Just 18 lakhs of them. Yeah. Fortunately, all 18 lakhs are uh, the nationals. Right. Unlike many other countries. <laughs> right. We have 18 lakhs uh, anti nationalists here, but then yeah, the, exactly. the, 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 the population. So fortunately, that is what is the saving grace. Therefore, Israel will not even uh, you know, uh, afford to lose one soldier. Right. You know, previously also there is an example, uh -huh. just to get one soldier back from uh, Jordan, uh -huh. they uh, gave away 1,700 uh, Palestinian prisoners. Oh, that's... So that is why uh, Hamas was so eager to capture the uh, hostages, hostages right. Right. because then they can bargain very strongly, this which time... this time, no, yeah. nothing doing, uh, they we will take it with a, you know, Iron fist, uh, yes, yes, and that's that's how they are. But been then anyway. uh, we will not let you blackmail us like right. that. So now that now that we have seen all this, we have seen radicals who stood stood behind Hamas. We have seen protests happening all over India, different states, Bangalore. It happened. What is what is it for India to learn from this? See, uh, there are many lessons. Number one, we have hostile neighbors on both sides. Okay, and uh, within the country, uh, we have you more know, dangerous there. Maha, yes, so we have to handle the hostile neighbors. Right. Uh, there is an institution to do that. Okay, army, navy, air force will do that. Right. Okay, what we have to handle is this enemies within. within. They are m m most uh, dangerous and because they are, uh, you know, uh, destroying the fabric of our uh, nation. Right. So, so, ah, and who has to do it? You and me have to do it. We, right. we, the citizens of this country, right. have to do it and have to understand their, who, where are they getting their support from? You, you heard in, uh, we saw in the news, uh, along the MG road there were uh, protests. Uh, correct. You know? correct. And uh, uh, the people who are not aware of it will think, oh, this is a uh, you know, no, human right. Uh, the, the news flashed like that. You know, Indian Muslims in support of Palestine. Yes. Indians are in support with Palestine. Yes. And uh, such things will happen till, uh, of course, we have the election right. coming up in few months. Right. So all this uh, is working backwards. Huh? These are the groups right. with the vested interest. We'll continue to do this, harm this. And we, the citizens, we should realize. Right. See, there is an example. Uh, historical uh, this thing that Palestinians are not uh, one of those uh, victims of uh, violence or nothing like that. When uh, post 1967 that six-day war happened, uh -huh. when uh, Israel uh, reoccupied or maybe occupied for the first time uh -huh. the West Bank, uh, nearly 1.5 lakh. Palestinians migrated to Jordan. Okay. okay? The king was um, kind of forced to accept them. Okay. So he set up a camp and everything. And the same Palestinian attempted killing that king. Correct, correct, correct. I've many, this. many, many attempts were made. Right. Uh, killing the king. And then they, they, they were successful at some point of time? Oh, yes. And uh, there was a, what finally, uh, they hijacked four planes. Jordanian planes and bombed them in public. Right, and they, they killed all the people that. All the. 
and the king said enough is enough he had one brigadier from pakistan called ziaul haq okay okay he was a brigadier then later on he becomes the dictator of pakistan he along with the uh, jordanian army killed 25000 palestinians the pakistanis killed 25000 palestinians so there's no brotherhood now yeah, nothing no 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 they all say oh muslim muslim bye bye yeah. nothing like that this butchers the ziaul haq was called a butcher of palestinians so this type of history but then nobody nobody cried foul then no humanity nothing 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 it at all buried in the historical pages it's so uh, unbelievable this is yes so we must realize all these things right. what what is their agenda right now, what do I now that you spoke about king taking them now now that people are removed from gaza strip no islamic nation wants to take uh, those people just like rohingyas when removed bangladesh doesn't want to take them pakistan of course they can't take them because they don't have funds and things like that so why isn't the brotherhood coming now i mean if you really believe in brotherhood shouldn't the islamic nation like uh, egypt be taking these people why aren't they taking no uh, as i mentioned there is a historical evidence what uh, is the nature of palestine so there is only one border post which is controlled by israel called rafa okay okay uh, sorry egypt it is controlled by egypt okay. called rafa so with great uh, effort uh, the intervention from us they opened that gate just to allow the humanitarian aid okay but they will not allow a single palestinian go Come through the right. because they know what will happen but but we have also heard uh, this you know intellectuals advising india to take rohingyas hmm so that they can do that, can that free do. advice they can do <laughs> but uh, the uh, there, there will be pressure on european countries to accept these and, migrants and but happening. no islamic country will ever take any single palestinian is you it can... only palestinian or just in case tomorrow if there is shia sunni conflict in pakistan and uh, let's say sunnis are removed from uh, pakistan do you think any other islamic nation will take them no no there is no chance see uh, the hizbullahs are also bombarding from the northern side okay hizbullahs are basically shia muslims okay, okay? hamas is a sunni so, muslims right. now because they have a common enemy called israel yeah, they have right. come together right. the moment israel is not involved then they will fight among themselves right. so like right. uh, there is no question of brotherhood here right. the moment um, two countries with a different ideology uh, have to confront then they will kill each other right you also said that you know uh, india to uh, overcome the enemy from outside we have military and so now that you are a wing commander you know it's, you are the right person to answer this are we equipped with enough uh, arms and ammunition and the, and the techniques that that we need to counter the the terrorists or the infiltrators or the countries that that are uh, uh, you know that wants to do bad things to india are we equipped see uh, what happens is the threat perception to india is assessed regular basis by the uh, military perspective okay what is the threat on the western side what is the threat on the uh, north north eastern side okay so there is uh, something called threat perception okay. which is assessed with a military uh, point of view okay. okay and the acquisition of the weapon system uh, will take place accordingly okay. and it is also compared to the acquisition of the other side of the border right. what, what are they have right. what what is their capability right. so like that uh, some assessment is made unfortunately there was a vacuum in between uh, about uh, you know um, post buffer scandal are we talking about 1960s yeah, yeah around the late 70s late 70s okay when the buffer scandal buffer itself is an excellent gun okay okay very good gun and uh, army uses it quite extensively but in the backdrop there were a lot of corruption charges and a you know, lot of commission was given to various uh, including some political uh, okay. uh, persons okay. so because of that uh, the acquisition got slowed down for next 30 years india did not buy anything because of, you know the country. now the things have improved that means there is no third party involved 
Okay. It is government to government okay. deal. Yeah. Okay. So it is open to any uh, scrutiny. Any anybody can uh, examine question. And like it happened in Rafale. Yeah. It was direct country it's to country. Right. It is government to government. Right. So and uh, so second thing that happened is uh, we were not giving enough importance to the indigenous production of the, all this military so wear. Yes. Yeah. See, remember HL started by a businessman called Walchand Hirachand and Maharaja of Mysore in 1940 okay. to manufacture the aircrafts. Right. Not many countries in 1940 were manufacturing aeroplanes, but we were manufacturing. But in between what happened, it, it got nationalized, it, it got, uh, you know, bureaucratic uh, interference takes right. place, budgetary constraints, all those. We would have continued to progress means we would have uh, oh, manufactured right. Rafales in HL. Right. Right. But it is unfortunate. But it is happening now. It is happening, it now. Is happening now and it is happening at a quicker phase. Because earlier uh, the uh, Tejas were uh, manufactured at the rate of 12 aircrafts per year. Okay. Now the aim is 36 aircrafts. And there is another HL which has started in Tumkur for exclusively for helicopters. After the smart city project. Yeah. Right. So, we recently now we are building up both indigenously and uh, we are also doing some emergency shopping uh, right. through France, through America right. and through Russia. That is unavoidable. Yes. Yeah. It has to be because I told you we have to match that, right. uh, you know, advers adversaries uh, war machinery. We, we are quite okay. Right. with our uh, preparedness yes. and uh, equipment uh, wise. Very nice. So, it is said that Gaza attacked Israel. Within five hours, there was retaliation from Israel. This happened because of a strong political uh, decision-making power that they have. So, what do you have to say about the political willingness here in India? As of now, at least, we are talking in 2023, October. What do you have to say about the political willingness to retaliate and, and things like that, to take them down, not show any courtesy to people who kills our civilians? What do you have to say about it? Sir? Uh, firstly, um, there are two basic differences in the political leadership of Israel and India. Oh, okay. Net Benjamin Netanyahu is an army man. Oh, okay. Okay? Uh -huh. And uh, if you remember, Entebbe operations, where they went 4,000 kilometers into African country called Uganda and rescued their hijacked uh, people. Okay. He and his brother were supposed to be leading that. Then they said, no, within one family, uh, we should only lose one if at all. Unfortunately, we lost the elder brother of Benjamin Netanyahu. So they are all from military background. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, Seriat Merkel is something like what we call para commandos. He belongs to that. Okay. So their thinking will be at, because they have to survive among the six enemy countries around in them. So unfortunate. Fortunately, yeah, fortunately, we are not uh, yeah, in, that in that situation. But the present political leadership is quite efficient to take care of all that hesitancy which we experience. So it's very important, the political leadership, what is their line of thinking will flow down to military leaders. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, we are, we are okay, being right up to the last soldier who is standing there at the right. Siachen uh, Heights. Right. So it, it matters a lot, the right. political leadership. And uh, again, it's a good time to be in India. <laughs> right. right. So it is all up to civilians to counter the uh, the uh, terrorists inside and it is all up to the military. Every citizen, every citizen should be aware that the enemy within has to be recognized and isolated. That's very important. Because there is no border for it. There is no LOC, LAC because they are all within. Yeah, so I mean the borders we know where the line of control. Yeah, border the armed forces will take care of. Yeah, so here we don't have a defined border. So yes. it, is, it is up to us to identify who it is. Yes. Right, right from the political decisions and then the, the border issues and then the conflicts that is happening. Uh, thank you for throwing light on all these issues, sir. Yeah. It, it was great talking to you. I hope to see you back in studio very soon. We'll talk about the HL and then its growth. Sure. sure. And, and then more about the battles that we have fought. Yes, yes. We have a lot of things to talk about, especially uh, Bangalore and Karnataka is now 
growing as a defense production center right okay? see the uh, future air uh, air warfare uh, will be fought with the drones drones yes. okay Unarmed. drones are armed armed, uh, armed sorry unmanned I am. Uh, unmanned unmanned vehicles and uh, we have developed a uh, very uh, uh, well established uh, uh, facility called atr aeronautical training uh, range, range that is near chitradurga oh. okay so when uh, edurappa was the chief minister he allotted 2000 plus acres in that area near chalakiri okay okay and earlier it was used for bombing practice of tejas okay now they developed a proper runway okay uh, in fact um, they, it can be used for commercial uh, airlines, uh, airlines also it will happen very soon okay. because it's such a beautiful uh, facility right. where uh, we are experimenting uh, drones called ghatak okay and uh, when it developed it can fly for 18 hours okay. it can fly at a height of 28000 feet okay. it can uh, carry a bomb load of 2 tons 2 tons 2 tons okay now any any and it's a accurate pinpoint bombing Okay. okay it is not that uh, rockets which i must <laughs> throw aimlessly uh, everything is accurate now okay uh, so things will happen right. now we are developing such precision uh, weapon right. system so exciting this is so let's talk about all this you know when you're in the studio in bangalore yes uh, but for now thank you so much for uh, your time i know you have things to do inside so thank you again it's a pleasure thank you